Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac again. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri and I am back with another cool tutorial. So as I promised, I'll be uh, trying to do more tutorials consistently. So this one, I'll be showing you guys how to create this uh, uh, sort of character, drunk, smoke guy or something, whatever you name it, but it's just, it, it looks pretty cool. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to do this using Phoenix FD and 3ds Max. So this is actually a, a shot that I've done like what, two, three months ago. And uh, it looks kind of cool. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this in this tutorial. So let's get into 3ds Max. And here is the Phoenix FD and 3ds Max scene, which I've got a character, which I've if I hide the Phoenix FD grid, you can see that I've got this character which is moving uh, in a very drunk sort of way and I've got a, a very subtle camera motion to follow the action and the character I've got it from Mioxmo you can basically go here to Mioxmo and select a character and there's a lot of uh, motions and you know animations that you can choose click and you can download it and import it into whatever 3D software that you're using in this case we're using 3ds Max and make sure if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon and select all so that you get the notifications whenever I upload a new video. And make sure to comment uh, in the videos, like the videos, share them with your friends if it is useful and uh, tell me what you want next. So yeah, let's get with the tutorial. So here is the scene. I'm just going to hide the uh, rigs for this character so I'm just gonna click and then right click hide selection I've got it and then I'm gonna go into the camera view again and the thing is first off we need to uh, we need to see where this character is moving where it starts and where it ends so that we can we can make our grid based on that so I'm just gonna go into the top view and let's see here yeah so here it is and it moves till here so I'm going to make a box around that area to specify the area that this character is moving and let's see here yeah he's basically moving a bit more so I'm just going to go and increase the length of this box if it's a bit larger it doesn't matter but make sure you it fits inside that box or whatever it is just to make sure just to get an idea of where we need to create our grid so if i come back here i can just uh, right click object properties and i'm going to go into see through so we can see through it and now you can see it's there so now we can make our grid based on this box so i'm going to go into phoenix fd uh, click here fire and smoke sim and i'm going to make it about the size maybe a little bit bigger uh, than that box so that and make sure the height is a bit higher because the smoke can rise up even though we will we will be you know the smoke will fade out till there but make sure you, you give it a bit height so I'm just gonna go into the Z axis and bring it down a bit so that's it now I'm gonna delete the box and uh, yeah that's basically it so that's the thing and then I'm gonna create a Phoenix FD fire uh, sorry uh, smoke source or fire source or whatever it is and then I'm going to pick this emitter this object as an emitter so it's actually added here so I'm just gonna delete this the previous one and I'm going to click here now you can see and uh, if I hit simulate right now, you can see that the object is emitting smoke and fire. All right, so I've simulated, but it looks like my grid is pretty large. It's actually 123 million polygons. So it's pretty crazy high. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna increase this so that you know just for starters to get less detail in order to see if it works or not 
you know you want to be starting low because you know just to see the settings and then once you once you get the thing that you're after then you can you can increase it to get more quality and detail out of it so now you can see it's pretty low res but at least we can see it moving okay and then the next thing is I'm just going to show you guys the settings that I've used uh, for my thing and the main thing is uh, in your in your fire source you, you want to make sure because the character has got some movement right so you want the smoke and the fire to follow the uh, movement of the character so you can you have to turn on the motion velocity I think here it is yeah motion velocity set it to one uh, in my example earlier I think I've set it to one probably I am not sure but yeah that is important if you wanted to you know make it look like it's following the movement of the character so uh, that's the thing and then I'm gonna just unhide the other grid that I have used so I'm just gonna delete this and this and my main grid is this one I'm just gonna go through the settings to give you guys an idea of how it looks so I've used about 8 million total cells and uh, is this that one or this let's see here uh, it, this one actually I'm sorry uh, so I'm just gonna delete this grid which was our previous one and this is the main one that I've used so I've used actually about 86 million polygons and it took me around uh one day and six hours or something so it took quite a lot of time and uh the main settings that i'm just going to go through is the dynamics of course as always so the time scale is 0.7 because i want to make it look a bit slow-mo and then the gravity because i didn't want the smoke by default the smoke goes up really high and really quickly so you want to make sure the gravity is low enough so that it just goes it just looks like it's going up but not that fast and then the other thing is um, the cooling should be 0.1 as default and the most important thing here as you can see in this is that when I play this you can see that smoke actually disappears it doesn't just last it just you know disappears so that's what this option is doing um, smoke dissipation it basically says that like how soon or how quickly the smoke disappears in this case I've set it to 0.3 which you can see I've, I've, I'm, I'm getting this result which is looking pretty cool and pretty natural so that's the thing and the other thing that I've done is I've given it some vorticity some large scale uh, 0.68 to get these small details you know these sort of small patterns in the smoke so that's what this large scale is doing you know the maximum you can go is one which if you want to simu simulate things like volcano explosions and stuff if you want to make it look like large scale you can turn it up but in this case it's 0.68 and the other thing uh, for the randomize I've used 0.4 for the amount and one for the dynamics and steps per frame to three which you know the higher you can go the better uh, usually you turn this up when you have like very fast moving objects and you want the grid to be able to catch the movement of the object but in this case it's pretty cool it's fine 3 is okay and quality is 12 and that's it and those are basically the settings and if I go into the rendering for the volumetric options a smoke opacity is 0.6 which which is which is very which is really good I mean in this it's dense enough and you can see the fire too so yeah that's that's the thing and um, that's basically it that's the settings that I've used and in the preview I've turned on enable in viewport and I've used a V-Ray light V-Ray sun and that's that's basically it so I'm just gonna go ahead and take a render from this frame and see how it looks so I'm gonna go into the render setup make sure it's single frame don't save and just render and here is the result so it's looking pretty cool and I can I can do some color correction here but I've actually color corrected it uh, using After Effects so once you bring in After Effects you can you can color correct it give it some contrast and some glow 
And as always, I don't render my 3D renders with motion blur, so I just use the revision effects real smart motion blur, which is giving it a very cool looking motion blur. You can you can you can even increase it to one and you'll get much more great results and it, I'm always using it for my 3D render so it's pretty cool so that's basically the tutorial for today and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, hope you learned something from it and if you have any questions anything that you miss out of this tutorial make sure to mention them in the comment section below and you know as always keep up with my channel subscribe like comment share and all that and you, you can check out my instagram page too uh, which my works are there so here it is in my instagram page i do post some of my works you can check them out and uh yeah that's that's basically it for today and till next time enjoy working